Hey everyone, Cody here, and today I'm going to show you how you can make your own Gerard Richter inspired abstract painting uh, using a simple scraping tool and some acrylic paint that you can get just about anywhere. So I'm not going to waste any time here. We're going to head over to the table and I'm going to show you the different tools that you can use and the paint that we're going to be using today for our Gerard Richter inspired abstract painting. So let's head over to the table and we'll get started. Okay, so as you can see, I've got some stuff laid out. Here are the, the paints we're gonna be using. I know it looks like a lot, but it's really not that much. Um, we're gonna do a base coat of red, blue, and yellow, and then we're gonna scrape over it with uh, this turquoise and purple. And we'll kind of talk about that as we go. Now, the tools for scraping to do a Gerard Richter or scraped painting, uh, kind of depends on the look you're going for. There are three common tools that I tend to use or I've seen other people use similar tools um, and I'll kind of explain the differences. So the first is a drywall scraper um, and these drywall scrapers you can get from a hardware store like a couple dollars, right? And I think, you know, you get like a pack of them, comes with like probably usually like three or four uh, for a couple bucks. So they're really cheap, effective tools. And so what a lot of people do with these tools is they'll scrape large sections of a color and they'll just kind of scrape the large sections over and over again with different colors. And they just kind of make these huge, almost like pixel type paintings where it's, it's large squares of different colors. They'll use different sizes. I actually haven't done a painting completely like that. So maybe that's something I'll do on the channel. If that's something you guys want to see, let me know in the comment section below. Uh, but yeah, they'll, they'll use these scrapers. Next is this, uh, this trowel. It's just a plastic trowel I got from a hardware store, a couple dollars. I tend to use this for scrape paintings that are on a smaller scale. Um, and what you can do is you can kind of make designs with it. So I generally do full scrapes where I go all the way from one side to the other. Um, and what you can do with these things is if you have a smaller painting, uh, you could kind of do designs where you, you do the whole painting, but then you go back across one section to give it like a specific look. Um, I have done that and I know artists who do that type of thing as well. What we're going to do today is more of I guess it would be it would lean more towards a kind of authentic type uh, Gerard Richter painting. If you ever watch his videos, in his paintings he actually scrapes the entire painting over with uh, solid colors, and he tends to use plexiglass with a handle. So this is what I've got here. I actually created this. So what this is is this is a sheet of plexiglass. Uh, I believe it's one foot by two foot, so 12 inches by 24 inches. You can get them in different sizes. I got this at uh, Home Depot, and this is just a sheet of, uh, I think it's eighth inch uh, plexiglass. And then these wooden handles are basically just little wooden uh, strips of uh, wood that I got uh, from like a bin or something. I don't know, you can usually find these at like hardware stores, uh, but I glued them to it with you know super glue or wood glue something something super sturdy right uh, so you can see that they're not coming off and so i made this and uh, to make it's probably less than 20 dollars, maybe like 15 something depends on where you're at but yeah i made this super easy to make uh, and this is generally what i tend to use for these types of uh full uh full canvas scraped paintings so that's what we're going to be using today and that's where that's uh that kind of how we're going to approach it so we're going to start with our uh three basic colors so we're actually going to start with the primary colors red blue and yellow and we're going to basically put them kind of in uh different places and this is kind of this is usually something that richter does is He'll, uh, he'll kind of paint a background very simply with different colors. And then what he'll do is he'll kind of uh, scrape over that. So when the scrapes uh, are pulled through, you almost don't see the, all those colors. But if the layers that he scrapes uh, goes over those colors, then, you know, the colors underneath kind of show through. So that's what we're going to be doing here. So we're going to go ahead and uh, lay out our three colors. We'll start with yellow. We're going to paint with yellow. I'm going to use the same brush for all of them. And we're just going to kind of pull this out. And then we're going to slowly kind of mix into one of the other colors. And I probably used a little too much paint, to be honest with you. Um, so, eh, yeah, there's that. But it's okay. We're going to just deal with it. We're just going to move right into the blue. 
And this actually will give us a little bit of uh, kind of color here. Move that down. And we're just kind of trying to cover the edges here. So get that there. And pull that into that. And then we'll just move right into the red. That's it. All right, so now that we've got kind of a background to work with, um, we're going to pull over those colors. So now that we have our background, just gonna kind of check it real quick, make sure that we got the edges uh, so that, you know, if we miss the spots, you know, there's a lot of these glaring white spots um, later on when we, uh, when the painting's done. So I'll just kind of cover that up doesn't really matter if it's not the same color, but that's fine. Um, I usually paint the edges of my paintings black, so it kind of frames the painting. So that's what we're going to do anyway. All right, so now that we've got that, let's go ahead and move into our scrapes. So there's two ways you can kind of do this, and I've done it both ways. You could put the paint on your tool here, or you could put the paint on the canvas itself. Uh, we're going to go ahead and do it on the tool. This is the more common way that people would tend to do it. I don't know if I can put this in the shot and, and show it to you guys. So I'll just go ahead and, and put the paint on there. Uh, hopefully by with one hand. Let's see if I'm good enough to do this here. All right, so we'll go ahead and put our acrylic on, and I think this one's almost empty. Ah. Yeah, it's pretty low. And yeah, we already got some on there, but that's okay. I mean, we're going to scrape it off anyway, so. Okay, so that one's pretty much out. So I'm going to crack this other bad boy open. And we'll pull it down. Oh, so one is actually a teal and the other one's a turquoise. I thought they were the same color, and they are not. So that'll be fun. All right, so now that we've got those on there, I probably actually need a little bit more. So I'm just going to make this, this little bead a little wider. Um, you kind of almost want more paint than less. It just kind of depends. But if you don't put enough, then it just kind of stalls out here. If you put too much, then obviously it covers it up so you don't even see the background. It's, it's about finding the balance, but you have to do it over and over again to really kind of find that out. All right, so now that we've got these paints on here, uh, we're going to kind of smooth them out. This helps with the distribution of the paint once you scrape it. So I'm not pushing super hard, but we're just going to kind of slather it on there. And actually, it kind of mixed them, so that's kind of nice. All right, so I'm going to put this stick aside in case we want to scrape that paint off. Actually, might just go ahead and put it on there. And we're dripping off the side. Okay, so now that we've got that on there, we're going to go ahead and put this bad boy right to the edge so that we cover the edge. And we're going to make sure that we kind of push a little bit more in the middle than anything else because the middle of the canvas is going to bow down from the weight since the frame is around the edges. And pushing down pretty hard. It's moving. All right, let's see. Oh, well, I had a thumbtack in there to keep it in place, and it ripped that thumbtack right out of the right out of the table, so that's cool. All right, so we're going to try to pull this through. Now, one thing that happens is sometimes it'll suction to the surface if, it's, if you lay it flat or pretty flat. Um, and when I had a thumbtack in there, it would hold it in place. Now, since it ripped that thumbtack out, 
Uh, we're just going to try to power through it. Okay, so we got most of the way through with that paint. And this was kind of the point that I was trying to make earlier, is that if you don't put enough, it's not going to go all the way through. However, it does have a nice, cool, scraped design. The only thing I don't like is the fact that it kind of went up. Okay, so I was going to try to find uh, some kind of screw or um, nail or something to drive into this bad boy, but apparently everybody's sleeping, so I'm not going to do that. All right, so I was going to do this purple on it, but I don't know. Does the purple look like it's going to go with those colors? I just, I'm not feeling it. I don't think it will. You know, we're just going to do it anyway. It doesn't matter. It's okay. We're just, we're, we're just, you know, trying to enjoy ourselves. All right, so we're going to go ahead and put this color onto our scraping tool here. And the same thing, we're going to go ahead and just kind of run a thick beam. You kind of want it closer to the edge because obviously that's where you're going to scrape. But it's okay if it goes out because the whole surface of the tool is going to hit it. So I'm going to spread that out a little bit. And we're going to go ahead and put that bad boy on there. Actually, I'm going to get that paint off. Okay. So now let's see if we can. So what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to push a little kind of into the previous layer. And I'm going to try to pull a little bit more of that layer through. So I'm going to apply quite a bit of pressure to the scraper. We're going to try to pull through both of those layers. Yeah, I knew it was going to start moving. Let's see if we can pull it through. Okay, so not a bad color, um, or not a bad scrape, I should say. We've got a little bit of kind of like a nick right here, and then a little bit of kind of separation here. Um, don't know if I'm okay with that. I don't really like it. Um, so I might actually just kind of scrape it along the other way. Um, sometimes this can ruin the painting by going against the way you've already gone, but you know, we're going to do it anyway. So I'm just going to lightly pull it. No, nope, that actually made it better. Cool. Uh, so actually, I'm going to stop right there because I'm, I'm actually pretty happy with that. And so kind of what I did, just, you know, on the, the difference in the two layers that we just did. So this, the, just before this, this, you know, vertical scrape, when I was going horizontal, I was pushing really heavily into the paint. This time when I went against the grain, uh, I didn't push as heavy. I actually pulled a little bit lighter um, so that you can see here I'm gonna I'm gonna grab the phone real quick so I can show you guys so you can see that you this layer that we just did before the vertical scrape the horizontal one you can see that previous layer right here so I didn't add any more paint but there's a distortion there's kind of a, a variance of the layer depth and the reason is, is I didn't push as hard. So when I pulled the paint against the grain, I didn't pull as hard. I lightly just kind of put it on there and, and pulled it across to kind of create a almost like another layer on top of the layer that was already there without adding paint, if that makes sense. So by going against it, we stacked the layer on itself. Um, and I actually am glad that it turned out this way so I could show you guys that. Anyway, all right, so I rotated it. 
I kind of had to look at it for a while to figure out if I really like it. But ultimately, that's it. I mean, I I like it. So I the colors actually kind of went together a little bit better than I thought they would. Um, but ultimately, I'm kind of happy with it. So that's it. I mean, that's it, guys. That's how you can make your own Gerard Richter inspired abstract painting. Super easy. Uh, again, I use plexiglass. You can use you know, a trowel, you can use some plastic scrapers. Again, maybe if you guys want to see like a pixel painting, we'll do that. And it's basically just different sized squares of different colors kind of overlapped. So that's it for the video. Um, I hope you enjoyed. And if you liked it, please let me know, subscribe, you know, consider that. And if you didn't like it, that's totally fine too. But that's it for the video, guys. Hope you enjoyed. I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care. God bless and see you then. Bye guys.